Welcome to the last part of the bridge tool. We basically have all the logic and only thing left is to make a tool and use this in Unreal. I will probably need to select everything I have over here, uh, except of course the curve because the curve wants to be done by uh, Unreal. We're going to use the subnetwork and once we have the network, we're going to right click and create digital asset. Then we can type in something like tutorial Grox uh, bridges. And we're just going to click create. Now we have our menu for making an HDA. If you're already familiar with this, then feel free to add more parameters. Uh, one of the things that I definitely want to talk about is the voxelization will probably slow down the tool in some shape or form. So I do want to already maybe apply a switch option. So here we can switch it on and off. So by default, maybe it's off. So here we enable like a detail mode, for example or you can do it the other way around and have like a fast mode. Uh, so this needs to be a toggle. And if you press apply, the tool will now work a bit faster. Um, we can also have other settings. Here uh, we can offset, for example, the noise. So let's plug in the noise. And we can also here have um, maybe here a random. So let's say delete uh, bridges. And here we also have another additional random, and this is like uh, delete random bridges, for example, or secondary. And we can press accept. So as you can see, it's very easy to pick values and play around with them. But you can also here, for example, play around with the soft uh, ranges and push it more down or up in game engine as well. Um, but to me, this part always feels to a bit up to you how much control you want to have over the tool. Like here I have just a few sliders so the main offset will just here add some variations so we can play around to see what we like the most uh, and then here we can delete some of it in case we don't want to have too much we can start to delete some of it and then here we have the bottom bridges where we can also add more or remove them in case we don't like them too much um, so this will already start to work in Unreal. So make sure your tool is saved and up to date and let's launch Unreal. In Unreal, only thing we want to do is uh, drag and drop one of our tools, so the bridges tool in here. Make sure Houdini Engine is installed. So Houdini Engine for me is installed and working. Otherwise you will have issues. So if you need help with installation, I can recommend you searching for the installation tutorials. Now we assumed everything is working and we can just here grab our tool and drop it in our scene. So my tool is working and calculating, but by default, it won't do anything because the curve is still missing. In Houdini, we added a curve ourselves, but the curve is not part of the actual tool. Uh, but we do now here, if we scroll down, have our parameters. So we have here the detail modes and some of these sliders. And here we have an input uh, section. And of course, our input was curve. And in some cases, uh, here we need to manually set this to curve. So in case you would have issues with this, we look at how the menu goes and switch this to curve data. And now my tool will start calculating as you can see. So I can now grab one of the dots and this is a simple Unreal spline curve. So I can now here hold the Alt key and start modifying here uh, this curve like so. So we do see a few issues. Uh, our curve feels very stretched. And because sometimes in Unreal and Houdini, they use different wor world scales and other values. Uh, so that might sometimes conflict a bit. And a very easy way for debugging now uh, that I like to do is go here to Houdini Engine and open with Session Sync. We will now launch a secondary version of Houdini that is linked to Unreal. So if everything went correctly, we will now have Houdini open with the global node. We need to go back into Unreal and basically here click Rebuild. Once it's done that, it will basically now send the data to Houdini. So in this node, so we had global nodes before, but we now have all these other nodes. So here we have our uh, spline components and other data, but we want to look for the bridges tool that we have here. And in here, we can now right click and allow contents. And we can now debug a bit what's going on. So here we had a curve. So our input here uh, was this curve. And let's see how this process is going. So we are generating these curves, which are looking fine to me. Then we are here snapping it to uh, our walls. 
which in this case uh, is actually not working correctly. So let's see how things go. So I did see that I actually made a mistake on my wall section. And the reason for that is um, I need to set this actually to global space instead of global and instead of local space. Uh, so that is one small mistake on my end, but we need to make sure it's actually global. I forgot about that setting. So now my walls are working fine and let's see how other elements are working now as well. That also looks okay to me. So it was mainly that setting probably that I forgot. Um, but this is a very useful way for debugging because it's very hard to replicate exactly what is in real. And now we're actually working with the curve from Unreal itself. We can also here double check the unit scaling, for example, to understand how large the curve was compared to my original curve I was drawing in Houdini. So I really like using Session Sync for these type of issues where it's very easy to find and fix issues here with Houdini itself. So once we fi figured out the issue, uh, we need to of course save the tool. So we can here save our tool. And do remember if you still have your older version of Houdini open, which in my case I have, so I still have my old version open. So this tool still has the old um, or the other option where it's set the local. So what I need to do is I need to right click and match the definition. So doing this will make sure it's now using my new and latest tweaks. So be careful by unlocking and locking different nodes because at some point you might lose track of how many times you unlocked and locked nodes and they might get outdated. So once that is all done, so once that is all done, we can come back here to Unreal and we can see now these things are working. So they're working like expected. So they're following the curve nicely. Uh, so I can here now start to add uh, that additional part. And I can now here play around with the settings like I mentioned before. So we can add the offset. So we're now offsetting and playing around with that. We can now have the stone, uh, we can now have delete some of the bridges and play around with this. So we can, for example, say I want to create a connection between those two parts here. I can now use my tool. I can, for example, drag in another version of my tool. And do remember that we need to set these two curves. There is a way to automate this um, by using the correct namings. Um, and here, what I can do is place it, for example, here, grab one of the points and start to draw the curve now, like this. So you can see it's very easy now to create this effect. So the only thing I need to do is probably tweak the points to be a bit closer to the walls. Uh, so they are a bit inside of the wall. And you can now have these nice bridge effects that we've created for the project. So the only thing left would be getting like a mega scans material and make sure it looks a bit nicer or doing some other nicer material applications to this. Uh, but this is the base geometry that you can use uh, for this. So that was it for this series about the bridge tool. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.